Hey guys, Turk here. I hope you're having a good one. I've been hyped for Starfield for far too long, and my community has been chomping at the bit for me to give you guys a PC build guide as well as show you my optimized settings. You guys know I deliver, so I managed to get a 10 hour sneak peek of the game, and I got to try out a lot of different types of hardware to see how they perform. Now, I couldn't grab any game captures with my limited time, but I took some excellent notes and I wanna show you guys my hardware recommendations for a solid 60 FPS. After that, I wanna give you guys my quality settings to use to make running around Aquila City and looking for that gravitational anomaly as smooth and gorgeous as possible. Crank up your grav drive, this is gonna be a bumpy ride. For the skeptical folks out there, I know this might come off as a bit of trust me bro, but guys, I promise you, Ramsey and Travers would be proud of the results I got, if you catch my drift. Having played through the first few main story quest missions, Bethesda accurately described the game up to launch. Todd Howard has gone on record, claiming the game hits 60 FPS in spots. Fact check true. When running around inside buildings, caves, and other enclosed areas, the game easily hits 60 FPS with decent quality settings to boot. As for the 30 FPS cap, my previous Starfield video was spot on. When running around in the open world, in towns, and even some intense gunfights, around 30 FPS is really easy to hit. Depending on your hardware, that number can go up or down, and that will ultimately determine your frame rate, not your quality settings. We'll get to my optimized settings in the second half of the video, but we do need to understand the game's limitations and how that can change depending on your PC setup. Looking back at the previous reveals and interviews, Bethesda has been entirely transparent about their performance target, 30 FPS. Looking at their recommended hardware, it covers both ends of the resolution spectrum. Their minimum spec PC has a Ryzen 5 2600X and an RX 5700. That CPU is over five years old, and I have sold a lot of that type of hardware a while ago. For testing though, I'll be disabling two cores from my 2700X, and I'll be using a less powerful 5600 XT. As for the recommended spec, they only bump the CPU up to a 3600X, while cranking up the GPU to a beefy RX 6800 XT. Again, I don't have the 3600X, but the regular old 3600 is a popular CPU amongst budget enthusiasts. That's an incredible swing to only be hitting 30 FPS, but how will the console experience check out? In my definitive console PC build guide video, I developed a configuration that perfectly lines up with the Xbox Series X and a handful of games when played at console equivalent settings and resolutions. For the GPU, that comes out to be an RX 6700 XT, and for the CPU, that's just a 3700X with the frequencies dialed back a bit to match the Series X. I'll post a link to the PC part picker build in the description, but as you'll soon see, this setup is right on the money. So that's the hardware, but how am I going to be testing the performance? For this analysis, I need a consistent and reproducible event representing a broad spectrum of gameplay. Running around New Atlantis just outside the Constellation base is a good spot for checking performance. It performs similarly to the open world experiences, with NPCs stressing out the CPU and long stretches of landscape putting extra pressure on the GPU. At 1080p, 30fps is achievable with all setups. The minimum spec performs admirably, but we are entirely GPU limited here. The quality settings scale well, but unfortunately we don't have the GPU power to bump up our 1% lows. Our Series X build hits our thresholds perfectly, though we are CPU limited. 1% lows are just above 30fps, and average frame rates suggest that we have the legroom to bump up our resolution a bit. The recommended specs with the 6800 XT are noticeably CPU limited, so let's go ahead and crank up the resolution. Digital Foundry's previous analysis of the gameplay reveal suggests that Starfield will run at about 1296p, so how does 1440p run? The minimum specification continues to be GPU limited, though it just nearly hits the 30fps target. This aligns with the Series S's target of an upscaled 1440p resolution, and optimized settings can get us even better. And would you look at that? My Y30 FPS video is confirmed with my Xbox Series X build. 
Even at high quality settings, we manage 32 FPS for our 1% lows, satisfying Bethesda's performance target. At 1440p, the 6700 XT is clearly GPU limited, making it a good candidate for FSR and some optimization. The recommended setup almost hits 60 FPS, but 1% lows are less than ideal, suggesting that we need a bit more CPU power to improve. Also, we are starting to get a little bit GPU limited with that ultra preset. 4K is a humbling resolution with Starfield, with only the recommended setup hitting 30 FPS consistently. Minimum spec? <laughs> Lol, no way, Jose. The Xbox Series X clearly can't handle this resolution, confirming the need to use dynamic resolution scaling, or DRS, to maintain the 30 FPS target. As for the recommended config, it's now wholly GPU limited, though it's still a good experience. So, Bethesda delivers what it promised, 30 FPS at 1080p, 1440p, and 4K while maintaining stunning visuals. From Bethesda's baseline, it should be abundantly clear that this game can be highly GPU limited while requiring a modern processor to get us up to 60 FPS. Since over 97% of y'all watching this video aren't subscribed to the channel, I'm going to hold back a little bit on my hardware performance analysis for now. This is still a pre-release version of the game, so there still could be some performance improvements that I'm just going to need to retest. But if this video gets 500 likes, I'll lead you guys deep down the rabbit hole with my hardware analysis. But for the TLDR, here's my day one recommended hardware for Starfield. If you're going to be playing at 1080p at 60 FPS, you're going to need a Ryzen 5 5600X and a 6800XT. Though a 6700XT could get you there, you're going to need a little extra GPU horsepower to play at high quality settings. If you're a mid-range gamer going for 1440p at 60 FPS, you're looking at a 7600X along with a 6800XT. It barely hits 60 FPS with the high preset, but we'll get there in no time with my optimized settings. If you've got a high-end rig and wanting to play at 4K 60 FPS, you're definitely looking towards a 7600X and an RTX 4080. The 6950 XT almost gets us there, but sadly, that requires the latest generation of GPUs. Now, if you were curious about other types of configurations, I've found that this game's high quality settings align well with Hardware Unboxed's The Last of Us Part 1 benchmarks. For 1080p, you're going to need anything around an RTX 3060 Ti. If you're going for 1440p, anything above an RTX 4070 will get you there. And for 4K, well, be prepared to drop about 900 bucks for the privilege. With hardware out of the way, let's talk about settings. Starfield is a beautiful game with an incredible graphic fidelity baseline. Even with the low quality preset, this game looks fantastic. Unfortunately guys, I'm going to have to leave you in a bit of a cliffhanger for now. Like I said, I took really good notes and I do have optimized settings, but I've got to grab that footage as soon as my open access starts up. These settings have been verified in New Atlantis, Achilles City, and over on Neon, so make sure you are subscribed to the channel and have clicked on the bell icon. My recommended settings will hit the channel as soon as I grab that footage. In the meantime, you can follow me over on Twitter, at the Turk, and I appreciate you guys sticking to the end of the video. I hope you've enjoyed it, and I'll catch you guys in the settings video. Later.